body tension. Your heart beating. I can create scenarios that never even existed. Clench their jaws, grind their teeth. It feels like a weight. It feels like drowning. Anxiety Nation. It didn't have a name, it didn't have um, any understanding around it. For me, it was just my personality. It's just who I was as a character and as a person. There are times that my anxiety becomes overwhelming and it triggers my depression. So it will then at that point need to take medication so that I can, you know, kind of reduce the, the symptoms. I realized real quick that I couldn't separate from the monster long enough that I could get skills or I could calm down long enough. I want to be able to turn him on, but I want him to be controlled. I want him to be managed and then be able to turn him off and put him in his little box. Combined methods of treatment tend to be more effective in managing anxiety. All the literature would say that the best treatment for all psychiatric conditions, but particularly depression and anxiety, is the combination of therapy with medication deep breathing, things like exercise, things like meditation. They're all options to help decrease your anxiety, but you shouldn't just do it because someone tells you to do it. You should try it out, see if you like it, see if it works for you. Has meditation helped manage your anxiety specifically? And has meditation helped manage stress? I was very resistant to pursue medication as an option, uh, as that, that goes for talk therapy as well. But I've come to lean on both of those tools in addition to my meditation practice to support my, my healing and just taking care of myself. Some treatments more than others can help rewire your brain. This idea of neuroplasticity that we hear so much about, um, that just using my mind in a certain way uh, can actually change how the brain functions and also physically how the, tr how the brain is. There's a natural progression of treatment. Meds, mindfulness, cognitive behavior, and then what happened to drive me to Ketamine is that I wasn't able to turn off the triggers. I could start seeing that they were coming, but I couldn't stop them. So now I recognize what happens after the fact. I recognize some of the triggers. Studies have shown that repeated ketamine infusions are beneficial in reducing depression symptoms. That like they're awake. Um, they're just in this sort of disassociative space, sort of having that, it's not a true psychedelic, but it's a psychedelic-like experience. I would watch ha what happened to me in my trauma event, I, through multiple of them, and then basically at the end, I would see that, okay, in the end, the only thing that mattered is how I responded to it, then and after, and that I made it out safe. Um, and when you've got a traditional treatment such as SSRIs or SNRIs or tricyclics that you know your first line therapy has about a 33 percent success rate. Ketamine most of the research shows a 70 to 80 percent success rate. Coping skills are really like hobbies and they're not something where you can one size fit all everybody. Medication can have really amazing results in anxiety but at the same time I often tell people well of course you still have the worries, of course you still have the triggers, of course there are things still going on in your mind that medication's not going to wipe away. Not every person is going to feel everything and not every person is going to feel anything. It's just understanding what does it look like for you and then what is it that I need to do to get to a point where I have a better management of this diagnosis. I don't believe you can ever get rid of him no matter what treatment you do. Um, there's no way to completely bridge what your old memories were before to now and skip all the things in between. The struggles, uh, we call it what, what crosses we bear, also makes us who we are today.